Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio. I think it's maybe basketball season now because we just had a head fake here uh, with gold big time on Friday. Wow, gold was pushing stronger last week, pushing up 1950, 60, and then we wake up Monday morning and it's down 100 bucks. So we're going to start this week's show with the head fake there with gold between Friday and Monday. Now we're sitting here, we bounced off about 18, what, 48, 1850. And where are we going from here? You know, normally I like mocking your analogies, but I'm going to let you keep that one this week. (laughs) Well, I'm going to say, too, that Miles kind of expected the head fake, so I don't think he really fell for it. His left shoe is still on his foot. But, Miles, showing those charts because you didn't get juked out of your converse. Oh, okay. Uh, by yeah, the I just fake. gave him okay. a weird look. Yeah. I had he, no idea I what I lost that our own the co-host. Converse. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, Miles, you know, showing those charts about what we were thinking could potentially be a breakout only to come back down. Now, we'll talk about the news later, but showing these images is pretty powerful. Right. I wear my converse, my black and gold converse on uh, Jeans Friday in the office here, so... In the meantime, since it's Wednesday that we're recording this show, let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. We've been watching this declining compression, which we did have a breakout of. And I know we talked about this breakout here leading into the election and throughout the election, pretty aggressive push up. But one thing we wanted to point out, too, is you can't just have one indicator give you an example of a potential trend change. So that's why Robert and I are always trying to say, okay, it's not just compression, it's not just fibs, it's not just price action, it's not just these geometric patterns you see in the charts. You have to have multiple things all lining up at the same time. So for me with gold, one of the biggest things that we saw was this breakout. So I was asked last week by a couple coworkers, what percent chance do you give this? And I said, I don't know, 30, because previously it was zero. Previously, I was pretty certain that we were looking at continued down movement and giving this single indicator means, okay, it's no longer zero. It's more than zero, but it doesn't mean it's guaranteed. So the next thing we started looking at is I started looking at some of the previous highs, which we left a gap into. We never came into the previous high going back to the beginning of September that built that downwards channel. And then, of course, since the election last week, we've turned around and we had this massive plunge back down, whether we're looking at trading positions that had already been placed there. I don't know why people would have had standing price sell orders at 1960. I don't see any charting reason. And Robert, maybe you can enlighten me on that. Or something we haven't talked about in many years Maybe we're seeing some type of manipulative action from some sort of plunge protection team on the other side, on the equity market side, that caused this dramatic drop in gold. Either way, regardless of what the cause of the drop is, now I know this is important to a lot of people, but for me, the charts don't lie. Regardless of the cause of the drop, we did have a breakout out of that channel, but we didn't put in a higher high, and we've subsequently come back down into the channel, and we've actually put in a lower low. So I'm sticking with my low 1800s. I still think we're targeting that. I haven't changed my mind in the last couple of weeks, regardless of the head fake Robert talked about. Yeah, I'm getting ready to just call you Perma Bear. I think a bunch of listeners I know, are probably I'm a getting tired old of man. you just never believing in the gold medal, but that's micro cycle stuff, not macro cycle. You're still bullish in the long term. Of course, you're I just am. I talking have been about for these years. pullbacks. Yeah. yeah. So don't get discouraged again. And I've heard Robert say it 15 times buy the dips. If I thought we were in a long term bear market, I would be talking about tops, not bottoms. And I want to make sure people understand that and why every week Robert comes in and he reminds us what we're talking about here is opportunities to add to positions. When we feel like gold has reached a top and it's time to start investing in the equities market again, we're going to be trying to help our listeners look for places to get out of some of their gold positions. Or even better yet, look for places where we can make ratio trades. But at this point, in a rising, long-term, very clear bull market, the reason we're talking about bottoms is because we know there are people with cash sitting on the sidelines. Yeah, so as you're talking about you're looking for bottoms, we're looking to get long before, during, after a bottom, sometime in the bottoming process. And the bottoming process has been, as we've talked about the last few weeks, this bottoming process with gold has happened consistently in the last seven years 
in the November to December time frame. That's where we are. We're going to see a bottom here, I think, put in with gold in the next few weeks, probably before Christmas. And then once the stimulus bill comes back into the news cycle, once things come back into play with the seasonal strength here, gold's going higher. So this is the opportunity to be getting long in this bottoming cycle, whether the bottom was on Monday after this huge decline, whether we go a little bit lower, we're going to bottom here, I think, in the next few weeks with gold. Yeah, may it be. May it be. And we're in for two rough quarters. That comes from Chairman Powell. The numbers are already shaping up that way, and that would go hand in hand with an equities market retracement. But yeah, quarter four, quarter one of 2021 uh, are probably going to be a little rough. And talking about the stimulus measures, the talk now is McConnell saying he doesn't really see the evidence worthy of further stimulus. And yet, you're having the economists say we need more stimulus, especially as we start to see quarter four and quarter one take shape. So I strongly lean towards additional stimulus. I just think there's going to be a little bit of a fight as to be expected in the Senate, especially if the Republicans prevail and end up taking the majority in the Senate. Well, you say McConnell seeing, what do these politicians see? I mean, they live in la-la land. It's not like they're out on the street in suburban America, cities. They're living in a little bubble of D.C. What are they really seeing? What are they using as a barometer to make the determination to hand out money or not? They don't really see that. And they're making these huge decisions, huge financial decisions to print money that's just going to destroy the dollar and put upward pressure on the price of gold and other commodities. Well, maybe that's why he's speaking against it, too. You're right. He doesn't see it. And it's not for lack of looking. It's because those are major decisions, like you said. Long-term ramifications. What did we see the other day? It was 20% more dollars are in circulation in the world than there was at the beginning of 2020. Let that sink in. I mean, those are huge decisions that these people in D.C. are making, and it's going to affect the currency. The dollar is on the verge of breaking down. Right. Well, is it any wonder you're seeing a lot of money flooding into alternative currencies other than the government printed ones? Whether it's the U.S. dollar or the euro, I mean, gold's up, what, 1300 to 2000 That doesn't mean something? And we've just barely scratched the surface of what the next gold bull market's probably going to look like. Yeah, I agree. And it really comes down to, do you believe you can print your way out of the mess? Or do you believe you have to stimulate the economy and have a slower recovery in other ways? And that's really where they come down to the philosophical differences. For me, I think Monday's great news on a COVID vaccine was real. Yeah, you talk about a $100 drop. And here's why I think it was legit and probably not a manipulative situation. And that is because you saw a flight out of COVID safe investments into non-safe investments. And it didn't include FANGs. It's not like the tech sector just took off and ran. You literally had people leaving the positions that they had moved into as a result of COVID. And that was a true trend. And so I'm thinking people really want to see us turn the corner. And unfortunately, you're not having it. Gold is still very strong here. To have reports of a successful vaccine getting ready to hit the market, you would think that we would have come down further if that's legit, right? The problem is you've got a huge spike in numbers, further regression in economic numbers, and you've got, with these increased cases, a looming potential shutdown. We're seeing it locally, we're seeing it regionally, and we're seeing it nationally where you're getting more and more downward pressure on the economy before this vaccine can even be made available. Yeah, but I would argue against that just in the standpoint of look what the dollar's done over the last week. The dollar is up which would make you think you've had some decreasing dollar positions going into some other equities, as you were talking about. But the dollar's up only marginally, and we're still sitting down in the low 90s. So if we had this massive drop in the price of gold, gold is a pretty small market compared to currencies, and it's very unlikely anybody's sitting in, say, liquid gold positions like your futures and options contracts or mining stocks. You're still talking a couple-day clearing time to get out of those. So if we're talking about a single-day swing in gold price caused by COVID on the exact day that that happened, you're talking about that money going into cash and then also going into some other type of investment. And I don't think the U.S. dollar chart reflects that. So maybe that's just me personally. And that's why in this one case, the one chart guy who thinks charts say everything, this is the one time I am actually going to step out on a limb and say, I think there was some government issued or some type of manipulative push in these prices. 
What if it was money leaving miners because the miners got crushed? You still got to wait three and, days okay. for the trades to clear. Yeah. What if it's leaving ETFs? Still got to wait three days deal. for the trades to clear. So that's not new money moving in to no. the equities that fast. That's money exiting and other money moving into the new equities positions that are causing the rally. Right. So making the assumption that you had both an equities position, a gold position, and a cash position, and you're moving all three at the same time on the same day. And sure, that's completely likely. But the only thing I'm seeing that got completely crushed were the precious metals on Monday. So, and I don't know if that's COVID related or not, and I would argue not. And one of us is wrong and one of us is right, and it doesn't really matter. Well, it's not right or wrong. It's point A, point B. But, you know, that being said, it's something that you also would expect the manipulation of the mindset to be very important post-election. It's clear that we know that Pfizer could have released the news on their vaccine prior to the election, and they chose not to, likely, so that it didn't affect the outcome of the election. It didn't play. Big Pharma is no big fan of Trump's because of his price controls and that's of not pharmaceuticals. Our that's that's somewhat, not our opinion. That's fact. Right? Yeah, we're not choosing sides or stating opinion here at all, other than the fact that if you're going to come out and try to, to your point, Miles, manipulate the mindset of the perceiver as to whether or not the market likes the current news of potentially a new president being elected, and you want that to look favorable, what are you going to do? You're going to jack up the equities markets, you're going to drive the dollar higher, and you're going to drive gold down. And that is all encouraging points where if somebody thinks, well, maybe the market's reacting to the fact that Joe Biden, for example, might actually win the presidency, those are ways that you can manipulate the mindset of the investor and make them think that happy days are here again. So silver, similar movement, right? Similar up, similar down. Just again, like we talk about, silver is a more volatile metal. So the highs are higher, the lows are lower. So silver actually did where I pointed out a minute ago that gold had never really closed that gap up to show that it was potentially pushing to a higher high. Silver actually did. Silver came right into the previous floor, the trading floor between about mid-August to mid-September, hit that pricing, turn around and came down. So where when I look at gold, I see that one day decline is possibly having a little bit more manipulative position. If I were looking at silver in a vacuum, I would look at this and just say, yep, we hit a level where people had standing sell orders to take profit. Correct, right at 26 bucks, right where we had that previous floor from a couple months ago. So silver is actually building a really pretty chart right now compared to gold, which kind of, again, to me, I don't know how I became the paranoid guy this week, but I guess I am. No, I'm really glad you brought it up because something that was so encouraging to me was that the ratio hardly changed. We saw a total of almost two points fluctuation. And on a 5% gold drop, you would think silver would be down 10% plus, right? It was down like 7 to gold's five from that peak to trough. So all that being said to me, that was encouraging and I feel great about both prices. And then closing out the metals with the last couple white metals, platinum remains sort of hard stuck in this slowly rising trend. Platinum, just like silver, is more volatile. It seems to be leading the charge up and down. Gold is kind of the mercury in the thermometer. It's what you sort of measure everything else against. So platinum continues to lag behind. And we've been talking the same story for years, literally years, that platinum has been <laughs> literally years. Robert's <laughs> laughing that we've been telling the same story because we know there will be a day that platinum plays catch up. So platinum never, just like gold, never came anywhere close to some of where you could see its price turn around more like up around 935, 940, which would have been your last right shoulder of the previous highs. Again, going back to late summer, early fall, and continues to kind of compress upwards towards those pricing. So platinum's trading range right now between 850 and 950. I mean, it's a pretty massive potential trading range. So anytime we're closing in on that 850 mark, I'm a buyer. Anytime we're up around that 950 mark, I'm eh, hoping a for a pullback. <laughs> yeah, a holder, because eventually when platinum's one and a half times the price of gold like it should be, uh, then we'll talk about what we do with our platinum.
So one final note, and this gets back to what Tori was talking about a second ago. We did have a pretty substantial gap up open on the Dow Industrials, which did push us back up into testing against those all-time high prices again. So it's very likely we see the Dow turn back down over the next couple days following on Monday's announcement, whether it was COVID or whether I'm paranoid. And we should clarify gaps filling in a lot of the indices and not necessarily on some of the ETFs. Yes. And the derivative products. It's the indices that they tend to fill. Well, that does it this week for Golden Rule Radio. Thanks for listening. It's going to be another exciting week in the metals market. You can follow us on Twitter at ICA Gold. Like us on Facebook, McIlvany Financial. Give us a call, 800-525-9556. And our website is McIlvany.com. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. <laughs>